Hey guys, this video is about spatial pressure. I'm going to tell you what it is and why it's important to develop your dog's sensitivity to spatial pressure. So the first thing to understand is that spatial pressure is the language of the dogs. So, or the whole animal kingdom for that matter uses it. So we use obviously language, different kinds of languages. Dogs and other species use a form of spatial pressure. Now spatial pressure is not just about moving space or creating um, pressure with space. It's also a form of psychological pressure. So when you think about it, I'll see if I can set this up here. If you think about it, if you're standing there and I move in assertively towards you, there's a certain amount, the closer I get to you, especially if you don't know why I'm moving towards you and I'm moving towards you in a very assertive way, maintaining strong eye contact with you, that's going to, to have a type of, for lack of a better term, intimidative sort of feel to it by me moving into you like that. We, we actually use it as humans. Our species uses it in business a lot, in politics a lot, where we'll use spatial pressure um, and stepping in and kind of getting in someone's space to appear to be more powerful. So dogs use it a lot. Now, here's what I've found. So the Corsos here, that have been here for a long time now, they were feral, right? They were found in the Angeles National Forest. They'd been dumped there as young dogs and they had basically had zero exposure to people. So they, um, it was very difficult for, for them to be captured and to be brought into my facility where they've been trained and socialized for the, over a year. Um, but they have, have tremendous sensitivity towards spatial pressure because they are more raw in terms of who they are as animals. They haven't been um, influenced in the wrong way by, uh, by humans, by living with humans in a human household. So on the other hand, dogs that have learned how to push up on people without people pushing back, very pushy dogs that, um, in, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, intimidate or uh, try to dominate people that you know will get up and in, into their legs and push or, you know push their hands to get affection things like that and then if there's no pushback on the other hand from the human if the human instead of asking the dog to move away actually reinforces that behavior by petting the dogs which a lot of us have done then the dog becomes very powerful and very insensitive to spatial pressure so I'm going to give you a little bit of an example obviously we're doing this video live so anything could happen here <laughs> so we're going to see what's going to happen here so i just want to give you an idea of how different my pack is in terms of their sensitivity to spatial pressure so if i start moving right now towards okay here's a perfect example i'm going to have my camera girl here take this so this is shima so shima is a dog that's currently up for adoption at carl in ventura and i'm doing some behavior work for her before she's placed in home but she came from a kind of a hoarding situation so same thing feral dog because in hoarding situations they're basically out in a backyard or in a field or they're just not interacted with much by people so it's the same thing as a feral dog she's extremely sensitive to spatial pressure because she has not been influenced by humans she's not been able to push up on a human and have them not push back so if you if you watch here she's already in movement only because i i barely squared off with her a little bit she's like seen from see there so if i just turn my body this direction towards her and she catches me now she's going to retreat again she's actually come a long long way thanks to my pack they've really moved her along but a lot of times the only way i can get her to move over here is to either move farther over this direction or i can go right now she's going to go back into that little cubby hole over there so we'll move to another dog and then i'll i'll go back to her so if i'm for example right now i'm going to step in towards um, I'll step in towards Steve, right? So there, no commands, right? I didn't use any kind of commands at all. I just literally moved him by stepping into him and maintaining firm eye contact with him. Let me see if I can do this with the same thing with Grace. So without even looking at me, she's aware that I'm behind her. So she's gonna move. And of course, what I've taught my dogs to do is to go to place. When they're confused, they don't know where they need to be, they're not sure what it is that I want, then they know they're always safe by going to place. Now let me show you this guy. This is who I wanted to show you. This right here, this is Riley. So Riley, as you can see, is not, not intimidated by me. So Riley has 
been very coddled, especially when he was a very young dog. He was he was basically kind of like made the rules in the house. He he ran the house. So he he's been here for a, a couple of weeks now. So he's developed some sensitivity towards spatial pressure. And what he did just then was really really good. But of all the dogs here, he's the one that's going to be the least sensitive to spatial pressure. But this is what I want him to learn. So I'm very happy that he did that um, right now. But as you can see, he's not nearly as connected to me in terms of like watching my every move, seeing what it is that I want, whereas the other dogs are. So there's Shima again. She decided to come back out here. So I can move her around. Like I can keep her from going this way by exerting my spatial pressure in this direction. And then I can get her out from there by going in this direction. Now I've moved her there. Gonna stop. Now with these dogs, when you're using <laughs> spatial pressure, you have to move really slowly. You could just, all you need are little increments of spatial pressure in order to move a dog. If you go too far, um, Andy was a perfect example of that. Let's go this direction now. So Andy is a perfect example of that, where if you went too fast and too far with Andy, she would just retreat as far as she could possibly could. So right here, you can see I can move her. I can move her that way. So I can actually, by using different kinds, it's kind of like what a border collie does, or a herding dog does to, to um, with sheep, is they basically, they're, they're back and forth. They're, they go and move in all different directions depending on which direction they want to herd the sheep into. So let's go back to Shima. Let me show you again over here. So just by turning my body towards her, I've already gotten her to retreat. She is super, super sensitive to it. This is gonna go away or it's going to mute a little bit over time. Um, I want it to, I don't want her to be this sensitive to it. So this is something that we have to fix. So we've got all different kinds of dogs that turn that do different things according to spatial pressure. Let's go to, to Bjorn here. So I'm gonna show you, this is my own dog here, not a rescue or not a training dog. If I step into Bjorn, nothing. But if I continue, So once again, no command, nothing, right? Probably the same with her, she's pretty sensitive. Notice I'm turning in this direction because if I want to move, I use spatial pressure to move into her, I want to get the side that she's already giving me. So you can see she's already inclined to roll that way if she's gonna roll. So I'm not gonna try from this direction because this is way easier. So then I can step in, same thing. Let's go back to Shima, where did she go? Oh, there she is. Okay, so I'm gonna move, I'm gonna try to move Shima just from one direction to the other on the place board, and then we'll, we'll end it here. But I just wanted to give you guys an idea of how, how important this is, because you know I always talk about how um, you want to be the tool, you wanna be the, the best tool, most advanced tool to your dog. So you don't have to go get special um, leashes, and you don't need to use different commands for specific things. If you just represent authority, and you know how to use spatial pressure incrementally, you can actually move your dog to wherever you want. You can break dogs up if they're playing too rough. You can keep a dog from going in a direction you don't want them to. I'm always about less is more, less is more, less is more. So this is one way to do it, and it's something that I would really encourage you to develop within yourself and also with, with the dogs. So I'm gonna see if I can move her again here. She's very flighty, obviously, because she's not secure at this point, um, but it, she's a very fun dog to work with. So I'm going to move her that way. Now she starts to go too far that way. Now she's caught me in her peripheral vision, so she's going to stop. Now if I kept moving, she would go into flight. She would either go that way and get under the chairs, or she would go that way and get in that little nook, or she would slide out this way. So I'm not going to do that. And if, if I just want her to stay there, and if I would, this is all I was trying to accomplish, then I would back off. I would turn away from her and keep myself in a, in, hold myself in a way that was not intimidating to her. And I use that word loosely, but it's just something that everybody understands the concept of. So I'm gonna move her again. One place board, over. See if I can move her again. That's actually really good that she's not going to fly. So if, if my whole idea is to teach her how to settle with a pack, 
then I, I will respect that and honor that and stop and back off so that she can settle. Because that's my goal, is for her not to be in constant flight, but to actually like that settle, okay? So just a little quickie lesson on spatial pressure, why it's important, why some dogs are more sensitive than others about it. Dogs that are pushy their whole lives or start off at an early age being able to get away with a lot. Those are dogs that are gonna be insensitive to it. They actually no longer remember their natural instincts of, of yielding to spatial pressure, okay? Thanks for watching, you guys. Love you, bye.